Let's get it. Recently, Gwendolyn came out on her YouTube channel and said something to the effect of, fathers are useless. Now, I understand that many people could take umbrage with what she said. I don't agree with a general statement that fathers are useless. The truth is, I think that her father was useless. That's the home that you grew up with, and that's the man that you had in your life. Now, I'm not beating up on Gwendolyn, and I'm not trying to say that uh, she was wrong in her assessment, because clearly, if you've ever seen any of my videos with regard to me talking to Cody and his parenting style and how he dealt with his kids, especially later in season 17, where he had a daughter who was going off to get surgery, and this dude couldn't be bothered because he was supposedly scared. And you're so fearful. But this is the same man who will sit there and say, I ain't afraid of nothing but poverty. Well, apparently COVID was <laughs> synonymous with poverty to you because you use that as an excuse as to why you didn't go and make sure that your daughter was OK when she was getting her back surgery back in season 17. And I'm speaking of Isabel, of course. As I'm going back and doing the retrospective and I'm looking at some of the developments and some of the issues that were occurring interdynamically as far as the family was concerned, particularly with Janelle and dealing with her children, there was an instance where Cody was over at the house. Christine was there as well with Isabel and Peyton. Janelle, she's there with her house full of kids. She's trying to do some work with Christine with regard to the real estate venture that they were trying to get into. And Janelle's kids were being kids. They were acting up, acting a fool. Uh, <laughs> Garrison had turned off Gabe's video game or whatever, maybe the TV. Gabe got mad. He calls for his mom. Hey, Gabe, Garrison's up here doing this craziness. And so the mom goes in, did you turn the game off? He said, yeah, I turned it off. So she takes the tablet from him, which is normal parenting. Like, you know, if you're messing up and you're doing the wrong thing, then you need to find something else to do. So if you apparently this isn't keeping your attention enough to where you can do this. So you need to read a book, <laughs> which is nothing wrong. I have no issues with that. Now, when she takes the book, Garrison jumps up, runs across the room and kicks Gabe in the back. And Gabe starts crying. You know, Janelle, she barely got into the hallway. She has to turn around. She goes in there. She's mad. She wants to talk to uh, Garrison. And I think at that moment, it clicked to her that, hey, I got Cody here. I got backup. I'm going to call downstairs, get the father involved. He's going to come up here and lay the law down. He's going to talk to these boys because they're out of control and they had hormones. And at that moment, <laughs> she goes outside. She calls for Cody. Cody's dumbass is sitting on the couch looking at his computer, listening to all this happen. It doesn't get up and move until Janelle calls him in and calls for backup. First things first. I'm going to talk about Janelle real quick. Janelle is in a situation where historically she's been allowed to go out and work and she would be away from the home most of the day. And even though she had six children and she was a sister wife, Christine took responsibility for the day-to-day -day care of her children and making sure they got home, got out to school, making sure they got back, making sure they did their homework or started their homework. And she had the assistance of Logan, her oldest child. Now, it's funny to me that Logan later said that he never wants to be a part of polygamy and he doesn't want the big family. I wonder why. Because this kid has been doing kids since he was a kid. So, of course, he doesn't want to take the responsibilities. If anything, Logan and the siblings, the, the older kids who are around his age, who said that they don't want to participate in anything to do or have anything to do with polygamy, they see the negative aspects of polygamy. They see the responsibility that's heaped upon these kids and they've been taking responsibility for it. It's easy to say that you want to do something when you're not the one paying the bill. Cody's out there making these kids and his kids are taking care of Cody's kids. His other wives are taking care of Cody's kids and they see this and so they don't want to participate in it. Unfortunately for Janelle, this is around the time that Logan was in his first year of college, so he wasn't there to help her. 
So she lost the assistance of Christine. She lost the assistance of Logan. And to some respects, and I'm sure Janelle would probably agree, she was a little bit over her head because she wasn't used to dealing with these kids on a day-to-day manner in which she had was forced to do it now. And she said something that was uh, kind of hit me in a weird way. She said, well, these are young men. They're boys. They got the boy hormone. And, you know, I can't really deal with them. Bop, 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 bop. And I got to tell you, I grew up in a household. I had, like I said before, my mom and my dad, same house, married for 50 plus years. Now, when rubber meets the road, I'm going to tell you as a young man, who grew up in a household with a strong-willed woman. She, mama didn't take no mess, okay? Now, I'm not saying that I didn't get the uh, get in trouble, and then after I got in trouble with my mother, she didn't say, sit on the couch, wait for your father to get home. I'm not going to say that, or wait till your dad get back. I'm not going to say that. But at the same time, mama did some work. Okay, she was no slouch. My mama was no slouch at all. <laughs> she was a very strong-willed woman. She was no joke. She didn't she didn't tolerate disrespect. She didn't tolerate you just popping off saying whatever you want to say, however you want to say it, whenever you want to say it. My mama didn't play, and I was a big guy. I grew. I am. I'm, I know I look a certain way on camera. I am over six six. I am a big human being. Okay, and my mother was not a six foot tall woman. Okay, she was a, a average sized woman, and she didn't play. So when I hear Janelle say, "Oh, it's hard for me to deal with these teenage boys," I'm telling you from a a, a guy who was a teenage boy that women can deal with teenage boys with efficiency. <laughs> okay, and then what also bothered me was Cody's response to how. And what was happening in what he would refer to as his house. We've heard throughout season 16, season 17, Cody referred to these houses as his house. When Christine put him out of the house, he sat there and said, she can't put me out of my house. This is my house. This is my stuff. These are my things. And you take such possession and ownership over something. But as the king of the castle, quote unquote, you don't take ownership and possession over your domain when it comes to your kids. And by you being in charge, it's not just you giving orders, it's also you taking responsibility. It's not just you wielding authority and telling people what to do, it's you taking responsibility. If I was sitting there in Cody's position and I am doing some work on a computer, doing whatever I'm doing, working my hobbies, whatever I'm doing, and I hear my kids upstairs you know, acting a fool, then I would ask, what the hell are y'all doing? What are you doing up there? What what is what is all the noise? What are you, what is going on? What's happening? What's you know what I mean? What's the commotion about? And if your partner is already taking care of it, you might step back and say, okay, they got it. All right. But if you if you hear your partner talk to your kids, and then your kids continue with what's going on, I'm stepping in. Now, I'm going to tell a little story about when I was coming up. When I was a young man, and this is where I'm going to say, like, my mom being a strong-willed woman. When I was a young man, <laughs> I decided that I was probably about 60 years old. I said, you know, I had a curfew and all that stuff. I had to be home by a certain time. Blew that. Blew that curfew by at least a couple hours, right? I, I came in late. Homeboy came in late. <laughs> And, you know, because I'm getting big and I'm growing up, man. <laughs> I'm a man, dog. <laughs> I wasn't no man. I was nowhere near a man. And I found out that night. When I got home, my mom was standing there. She called me up to her room. I'm standing there talking to her and my dad. My mom is right in front of me talking to me. Read me the riot act, rightly so, about how I'm not going to disrespect her, disrespect her house. Da, da, da. You know, you have a time to come in. You got a responsibility. You got to meet those responsibilities. You got to be home when I tell you to be home. Ba, 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 ba. Right, 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 right. She was right all the way. <laughs> and I thought that I had the gift to gab, right? You know, I thought I was a good talker. And I talk with my hands. A lot of people can't tell that because of the, the way the video is framed, but I talk a lot with my hands. And I want to say something, you know, because I have the gift to gab. The speech of a mortal oration. I thought I was going to drop some uh, some mad lyrics, 
in this little rap battle I was having with my mama. Didn't work out quite like a plan. As soon as I picked my hand up, apparently she thought I was being aggressive. <laughs> so she grips me up, picks me up, and bends me back over the dresser that's in our room. And I'm bent over the dresser in the room. And over her shoulder, I see my father coming up quick. And he's coming up quick, and he got a look in his eye, right? <laughs> That's it. And at that moment, I was like, I'm about to get done. It's over for me. I'm, this is a wrap. This is no longer an issue of me getting punished. Like, I'm about to get, I'm about to get roughed up. Like, <laughs> it was terrible, right? And I'm like, whoa, 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 calm down, calm down. And I'm, I'm explaining, like, I wasn't doing nothing. I was just talking. He said, yo, no, put your hands up to me. I'm like, no, 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 no. I was just talking. I was just trying to explain to you what was going on. All of a sudden, all the pompacity and all the uh, <laughs> all the uh, air of I'm a grown man. I'm a grown-ass man, doc. You can't tell me what to do. All that was gone. Right? <laughs> now I'm trying to plead to her as her son, don't let this happen to me. <laughs> right? And in that moment, I realized something. And I never forgot it. At that moment, I realized something. What I realized was, as a, one, you got to respect your mom. And my dad will always put that forward to us that you have to respect your mother, first and foremost. Right? <laughs> and, of course, my mom, you got to respect me. But at that moment, I realized that I wasn't just talking to my mother, but I was talking to my dad's wife. Okay? And that's the difference. Like, these young men, as they're sitting there talking to uh, Janelle any old kind of way, talking reckless and loose to her, they are sitting there doing this in front of this man who's sitting downstairs on the couch, eating her food, laying up in her bed, but is not taking any responsibilities of being her partner and her man, right? I'm not even talking about being a husband. I'm talking about being her dude, her man, her fella, her guy. He's none of those things. See, because at that moment, he's just the baby daddy, or he's just, just some joker that she messing with. And he don't have no say in the house. You don't have no say in your house, which is a problem. Because he didn't respect his relationship enough to make sure that his lady was okay. When she's standing up there arguing and fussing and feuding with these kids, and these kids are up there disrespecting him, D disrespecting her, he should have got up off his ass and said, whoa, 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 what y'all not going to do is sit in this house and disrespect my lady. And not only, not only, it's not even a, a physical, I'm going to beat the hell out of you thing. This is a thing where you're teaching these young men to not only respect their mother, but you're teaching them the importance of respecting the women that they're with. They have to learn. This is where you learn that you have to respect the people that you are spending your time with, people that you're committed to. This is somebody that you are dedicating your life to, and what you're not going to do is disrespect this while I'm still above ground. As long as I got 10 toes and 10, my two feet on this ground and on this earth, you will not talk to her like that in my presence or ever. And if I find out about it, then we're going to have an issue. And we're going to exchange some words. And that's the subtle difference between Cody's approach to how he dealt with not only his kids, but how he dealt with his wives. He treated them like they were just basically, you know, things to do. Oh, I have to be here at a certain time. I have to be. I have this appointment. It's not spending time with your family and cultivating that family bond. Because the truth of the matter is, as much as he talked about, especially when we get to season 17 as he's being left, as much as he sat there and talked about respect, the fact of the matter is that that's part of respect. If you're going to respect me, you have to respect every extension of me. And if you're with somebody, that person is an extension of you. They're not just walking around in the planet by themselves. They're also you. So if you're going to sit there and talk to my lady that way, then you're talking to me that way. And if you will to talk to me that way, then you and I need to have a conversation. But what you're not going to do is disrespect my baby. And you're not. And then this is teaching your kids. And then, <laughs> as bad as it is, you're teaching your kids about life. Because the truth of the matter is, Cody may sit there and play this game. But there are a lot of men out there who don't play this. And you're teaching them how to navigate through many different situations. You disrespect, you disrespect this woman, okay, your mom, Cody is okay with it. You go down the street and you try that same thing or that same tactic with Mr. Joe or uh, Mrs., Mr. Uh, Stan 
around the corner and you might have a whole different reaction. That's my take. I'm James. This has been my take on reality and I'm out. Cause I've been living life right like I could just die.